Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to show you something obsolete. <laughs> no, not this thing. It's me that's about to become obsolete because this is the Xpeng G6 and it can do all kinds of things by itself. So today we're going to take it for a test drive, we're going to check out the interior and we're going to see what it has to offer as a family SUV. Hey, where are you going man? You still need me. So the Xpeng G6 is a pure electric medium family SUV with five seats. And honestly, it looks like something from the future, except it's here now. So we must all be living in the year 2034 or something. There's two versions on offer in Singapore. Both are single motor rear wheel drive with a long range version that has a 570 kilometer range. And this one, the standard version with 435 kilometers of range. So just look at how smooth and clean this car is. It's so smooth that it makes a baby's bottom look like sandpaper. And Xpeng's designers say they were inspired by the perfect shape of a water droplet. So they must have harnessed the tears of Singaporeans who have to pay for COEs to come up with this car. But to me, it's like someone threw a sheet of cloth over a car. And you know what? It's smooth for a reason. And that reason is efficiency. So this car has a coefficient of drag of 0.248. That's a measure of wind resistance and the lower the number, the more slippery the car. And every time you lower the CD by 0.01, you get 7 kilometers of extra range. Of course, when it comes to range, the most important factor is the size of the battery. The standard version has a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, while the long range model has a titanic 87.5 kilowatt hours. There's a difference in power output too. The standard model has 258 horsepower, while the long range has 286 horsepower. But there's actually a little bit of nuance here, guys. So the standard model, the one I'm driving, right, actually has an LFP battery that's lithium iron phosphate. And then the long range model has an NCM battery that's nickel cobalt manganese. So their chemistries are different, but the LFP one is the kind that you can kind of charge to 100% more liberally. Whereas with the long range model, you shouldn't charge it more than 80% too often if you want the battery to last longer. So when it comes down to it, in terms of the effective day-to-day -day range, they're pretty similar and probably you're going to end up charging the cars the same amount of times, the same number of times every week. So performance-wise, to me the standard model feels like a good 2.0-litre turbo, except it has a lot of torque and it has got instant response. And to me, this car is fast enough, 0 to 100 is 6.8 seconds. So let me show you what that means. I'm just gonna engage the launch control and let me just confirm that here. So let's try that left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. And let's not go crazy here, but let's just see how quickly it takes to get up to something like 90. And that's it. It gets off to a fairly gentle start, but you can see the speed picks up pretty rapidly after that. And okay, it's not fast enough to go and destroy a Lamborghini or something, but you know, it is fast enough to do this to your face. One thing about this car is that you can tune it to the way you like it. So what I mean is, of course, you have the driving modes like right? Eco, Standard and Sport. And within those modes, you can change the like power response. You can change the brake regeneration. So some people like to drive with like one pedal. Some people like the car to coast and so on or have low regen. You can do that on the screen. You can also tune the power steering's weight. So you can have it light or a little bit more weighty. Let's do Sport so that have a bit more weight over here and everything's safe to your profile. So I think that in theory, right, if you log into another Xpeng G6 with the same account, it should all change so that it's going to feel like your car. But in spite of all that, I have to say that this isn't really a sporty car. I don't really have much steering feel coming through. And even though the road holding is pretty good, it's just not a super engaging car to drive. Like, it doesn't encourage you to dive bomb into corners, but I think that's all right because it is a comfortable car. The ride is firm, but it's not uncomfortable. And you know, it's firm because I think there's 20 inch wheels. So you should probably expect that. And of course, being electric, you don't hear anything coming from the motors. You hear a bit of tire noise, but otherwise this car is pretty much silent. Like, it's almost comfortably silent. Don't you hate that? Hate what? Uncomfortable silences. So it's not a BMW, but that's okay because not every car maker wants to be BMW. So what kind of car maker does Xpeng want to be? Well, 
First up, you should know that this car company is so young that it's not even old enough to sit for its PSLE. It was founded in 2014 by He Xiaopeng, so he was a coder who built a web browser that he sold to Alibaba for something like $580 million, like, and that's American dollars too. So he's young and he's like, yay, I'm rich. What do I do next? And what he decided to do next was a car company. And what kind of cars did he want to do? Well, he wanted to build electric, connected, and self-driving cars. And he was obviously very serious about it, right? Because Xpeng comes from his name, He Xiaopeng. So he's literally putting his name out there, laying it on the line with his cars. I gotta say though, it's actually because of the sleek looks, it can be quite hard to see out of this car. Like I have no idea where the bonnet ends and when I look out the back like, through the mirror, I don't really see much. Uh, but that's okay because this car has like 12 cameras to help you out. So when you're going into a car park, you turn on the 360 monitor and it actually works when I'm at this kind of speed as well. And you can see pretty well. Hopefully that's going to minimize the chances they're going to scratch something. It also has 12, I think, sonar sensors, proximity sensors, as well as five radar sensors. And all that, of course, is in service of self-driving. In other markets, there are LiDAR sensors as well, but not here. So let's see how it does without them. I'm just going to double tap on the gear lever. And okay, straight away, it's taken over the steering as well as the braking and acceleration. So let's see how it does. I mean, I'm not going very fast, but this is a fairly crowded road. And I can tell you that in other cars, it can be quite abrupt the way a car kind of brakes and accelerates when it's doing the adaptive cruise control. On this car, it's fairly smooth. The steering is... Okay, I'm supposed to keep my hand on the wheel at all times, so I'm just going to keep a light touch. But it seems pretty forceful. Like, it doesn't really tolerate my inputs all that much it feels like okay i'm in charge now and it can you can see on the camera that you, the lines uh, the lane markings rather are visible to the car and i've noticed that sometimes if you go across a junction and the lane markings disappear the car is like okay you take over now i don't know what i'm doing so you have to pay attention at all times when you're using this system uh, something it does have that's not very common to other cars. Let me see if I can do this now because uh, the traffic's a little heavy now. But it can actually change lanes for me. So, okay, there's a truck coming up. So probably it's not going to want to do that. But let me see if I can do it when there's no one else coming up behind me and trying to kill me. All right, so let's try that again. I'm going to indicate to change lanes. And basically, when I want the car to do it for me, I just initiate the turn a little bit. I'm going to use my fingertip and it does the rest for me. And now I'm in another lane and it's turned off the signals as well. So that's something that's quite handy. You do have to participate just a little bit. But yeah, the car does a lot for you. But overall, I have to say that if I want to take back control, I do feel like the car is pretty aggressive about staying in charge. So overall, this feels like a car that really, really wants to take over driving from you someday. If there is one place where this car is ready to take over from humanity right now, it is the car park. Let me show you what I mean by that. Obviously, you can see that it's starting to park itself. And I'm just doing that with my phone right now. I'm going to follow the car as it guides itself expertly into an empty parking spot. And you can see that a lot of drivers have trouble maneuvering a car between two white lines when there's no cars on either side. But this car can see the lines. It knows exactly where it wants to go. And it is pretty much done. I can see from my phone that the parking is complete. So I have never felt more useless as a human being. But I did have to keep my thumb on the button at all times for safety. So maybe I'm not completely unnecessary yet. I don't know, maybe I'm not completely unnecessary yet. So before we take a close look at the interior, I actually want to show you the doors because this is a first impression kind of thing. And straight away, the first thing I notice is it's got frameless windows, which is a very sort of coupe like sporty touch here. Oh, and I've noticed that it has double glazed windows, which is good for temperature control and sound insulation. Okay, so in terms of this door, right, this is probably the only area where you find some harder, cheaper plastics, but everywhere else is actually quite nice. So you've got soft plastics over here. You've got this cream upholstery, which is a cost option in a Tesla, but kind of standard in this car. The speaker grille here is also very contemporary looking. And this car, by the way, has an 18 speaker sound system. So straight away, even before you jump into the G6, you do get a sense of its style and its quality. 
Okay, let's see what we've got here, guys. And whoa, look at how much headroom I have here. It's like they designed this car for the Pope. But okay, there's space for my head and my big journalist head. Because I want to talk about storage first. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no glove compartment for this car. So I don't know if this even opens up. But there is quite deep storage over here. Let me show you what I mean. You can get an entire bottle like this inside there. So that's pretty deep. And of course, there are obligatory cup holders with those fingers as well. So this doesn't shake around too much. And there is storage underneath this tray over here. Although it's not super huge. So I'm going to have to angle this bottle so that it'll fit. Something I did notice, which is quite nice though, is that there is a wireless charging pad. And it has not just a pad, but looks, what looks like a cooling vent that blows cool air at your phone so it doesn't overheat while it's charging. So that's a nice idea. And of course, it has space for two phones. And if you've ever had like a master bathroom with two sinks, one for you and your lady, then you know what a nice idea that is. And this 15-inch screen is highly customizable as well. So you can split the screen, you can have it a full screen with navigation, for example, or let's bring it back here, or you can swap them around. If I do a three-finger swipe, for example, I can do that. And look at how smooth everything is. There is a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor inside, so everything renders very nicely. So this is a typically EV kind of layout where everything is buried uh, in deep menus. But there is a plus because whatever you like most can be down here. So for example, this is how the previous driver liked it. I could delete and, or replace apps as I like. So let's get rid of Spotify right now. I'll just do the minus sign and see if I can get rid of it. And let me replace it with the radio. So I'm going to just drag the radio app down to this bar over here. And yeah, okay. So I'll confirm that and this is exactly how I like it. So, you know, the same way that you can have your mobile phone exactly how you like it with all the apps where you want it, you can have your favorite apps down here and have your G6 just the way you like it. Okay, let me just pause for a while to tell you two things I really dislike about this car. They're not really deal breakers, but they are irritating. And the first one is the aircon vents. So they look nice, but you have to aim them digitally through the touchscreen. I think that's just pointless because you could scratch your nose with a stick, right? But why would you do that? Just do this. And it's the same thing over here. Like if I want to aim it at my face, I kind of have to guess. And the other thing is the air vents are down low. So even when I want to blow at my face, I just end up <laughs> cooling my hand. And the other thing I don't like is this glass roof over here. I do like glass roofs, but this one doesn't have a cover. So when it's hot, you're gonna feel it. So really the two things I dislike most about this car have to do with temperature. Because of the roof, the sun is really not your friend. Okay, now let's check out the back. And the first impression is, look at how much space I have. I can practice my Kung Fu and everything. So before I beat the camera to death, I should also focus on what else I see around here. And I think the cabin ambiance is actually very nice in the back, as it is in front. So the materials are posh, the colors are also muted. And important things like the aircon vents are here and present. These are USB-C charging ports. And look at how neatly they're presented here. I'm not sure if this is a speaker grill. I don't think it is actually. The speakers here, but that's probably just for decoration. So it just looked like they kind of paid attention to how this car looks. I mean, have a look at this, for example, this bit of metallic surface over here. It's plastic, but you know, it just adds a nice bit of sort of visual poshness. Let me have a look at this here. Okay, I've got an armrest, no cup holders, but oh, okay. <laughs> okay, look at how that opens up. It's kind of damp and you know, it looks and feels posh. So, you know, I like that they've paid attention to that. I'm just gonna sit in the middle for a while. And just look at how much headroom I still have over here. So it is a wide enough car for three adults to sit in comfort. I will bet money on that. Oh, and something else I want to show you is that suppose I was seven feet tall and needed even more headroom, I could recline the seat this way. Or I could do this just because I want to look at the sky and kind of contemplate my life. But back to reality now. Uh, I want to see if you can move this seat. No, it's fixed in position, so the boot space is not going to be variable that way. But overall, I can see that for the G6, if the front was designed with your smartphone in mind, it looks like the back was designed with like a family in mind. Okay, family men, let's check out the boot together because that's going to be important if you've got lots of family stuff to carry around. So if you're interested in the raw numbers, it's 571 litres back here. I think a lot of it is going to belong to what's underneath this boot floor over here because you have quite a big space. And frankly, what's above it doesn't seem all that large. Uh, I want to point out a couple of rookie mistakes on Xpeng's part here. So let me just show you what I mean by that. One of the things that I think could be improved is that the luggage cover doesn't have anywhere to go after you take it out. 
<laughs> like so. Smoothly done. Some SUVs do consider it important that you have a space underneath the floor. But for this one, you just kind of have to put it on the floor and load your stuff on top. But that does open up a lot more space above this area here. You can see I have one seat tilted back and one seat up. That again shows you that you have a little bit of versatility with the amount of space that you have back here. So five seven one liters. Let me show you with the help of something I borrowed from a contractor. Then you can see how much I guess stuff you can cram into here. In terms of width, it's just over something like 1.1 meters wide. And from the seat back to over here, you're looking at something like 95 centimeters. So again, it isn't super deep, but this is an SUV, so you can expand the cargo capacity and that's easily done. You flip a switch here and the seats are actually sprung forward. So they collapse by themselves. And this gives you 1,374 liters. So I'm just gonna measure to the back of the front seat over there and it's around about 183 centimeters or around about six feet so now you know roughly like how long a piece of furniture or whatever it is you can load into the back here so honestly in terms of raw space this isn't class leading but i would give it a pass by the way if you're wondering whether there is a frunk the answer is nope but hey you can't have everything and anyway the g6 is very reasonably priced at least by Singapore standards. It's 228999 for the standard range and 242999 for the long range. And to me, that just screams value for money. So at the end of the day, I think it's two thumbs up from me for the x G6. It's stylish, it's modern, it's pretty high performance and you definitely get lots of car for the money. My recommendation is the standard version because I think it's fast enough and it has enough range for once a week charging. But of course, do consider the long range version if you like to drive from here to Kuala Lumpur from time to time. But either way, think about this. If you were to buy a similar SUV from the German suspects like Audi, BMW or Mercedes, you're probably gonna have to spend around about $100,000 more and you might end up with a car with fewer features, less room inside and less performance. So I know at the start I joked about how this car is going to make me obsolete, but I think there's a chance the x G6 is going to make the traditional combustion luxury SUV obsolete. So that's my quick and dirty review of the x G6. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but if you have questions about this car or any new car in Singapore, drop me a WhatsApp at the number below and I'll do my best to help you out. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you again.